Is there anybody in the room who does not like to be consoled every now and again? Okay, good. Nobody. So everybody loves to be loved, right? Everybody loves to be consoled, to be comforted. What if you could do that for yourself? You're always with yourself. Your partner may not always be by your side, and more than half of the time that they are, they probably don't feel like consoling you. What if you could console yourself? Not as a temporary fix, not as a shot, but as a really deep, constant sense of well-being, a constant sense of self-love. Anybody who would not desire that? Raise your hand. No? Okay, good. Because usually that's all that's necessary for healing to take place. We're all, to some degree, into the healing business. If you're in pain, you try to console the pain. If you're in emo emotional pain, you try to console the emotional pain through all kinds of means. But what if you had this one mean, at least for all your emotional pains, for all your psychological distortions, ideas, beliefs? Anybody ever lonely? No one? Wow. Nobody ever lonely? Okay, good. Thanks for your honesty. Half of the people. That aloneness, not so much the loneliness, but the aloneness, without the story of loneliness, just the being alone. Because loneliness, what is loneliness? It's simply being without anybody else being around you. Or sometimes you're surrounded by lots of people and you still feel lonely. But loneliness minus the story of you is simple, non-dual aloneness. If you don't label the loneliness lonely for a moment, you just relax completely all mental abstractions, all mental elaborations and descriptions. What shines forth naturally when you relax thinking I'm lonely or any other thought? What remains? Your aloneness. And that aloneness is love. Because the aloneness doesn't need the aloneness is. So self-love, comforting yourself or consoling yourself in all kinds of circumstances, in all forms of loneliness, throughout all forms of suffering. Self-love or consoling yourself. What, what's that experience like? All right, do you have any experience with that? What it's like to love yourself? Because I use that phrase quite a bit, love yourself, but do you really know what I mean by love yourself? Do you really know what I mean by love yourself? What if self-love is not just a thought? It's not just a new way of thinking. It's not just the thought, going from the thought, I'm lonely, I'm miserable, I'm unworthy, to the thought, I'm lovable, I'm worthy, and all that kind of stuff. It can be helpful, it can be a trigger to remember. But the real self-love that lasts, that's not a word, that's not an idea, is the presence that already is before you turn it into anything. Before you say what something is, it's nothing yet, nothing in particular. Before you give it a name, any appearance within consciousness, in other words, any occurrence of life, is life, and life is love. And I know that sounds cheesy and that sounds cliche, that life is love, la 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 la, sure. You're the, so many teachers out there that say it's all love. Where's the love? I can't feel the love. I can't see the love. Is this love? Is that love? Oh, so many problems. Uh, I'm so alone. Where's the love? Sure, I can recognize awareness, but where's the love? I don't feel fulfilled. The quality of love, it's like frying a chicken. It takes a while, it's like, you know, in the oven. You just sit there and you're waiting for it. You can see that it's a chicken, but it doesn't have that flavor yet. It's not ready yet. Sometimes, instantaneously or spontaneously, people experience love, just this causeless self-love. Not self in reference to any idea or thought about themselves or about other people loving them or liking them, but the self-love which is without other, just love loving itself. Usually that takes a little while, a little time to marinate within yourself. So the moment you stop labeling your experience, you'll start to notice a difference already. You'll start to notice that you're going from story to isness. Does that make sense, the word isness? Like my hand is, it's very simple. It's not a hand until I call it a hand. Before I call it a hand, what stands out to me? 
is the isness of the colors, the isness of the shape, the isness of the weight, the sense. It's not, not yet a hint. Of course, I understand that we call it a hint. But before you label anything, including your emotions, including your self-torture, before you label it anything, it shines as its isness. Its isness shines. Its color, its sense, its visceral sense, its emoting. Even the descriptions about the appearances that turn the isness into things, even that still is. Even that shines. Even the descriptions and the stories themselves, when we can look at them and not be them, but look at them, uh, we can appreciate the isness within the words of the story, within the description of the mind. We can see that the mind itself, thought itself, distraction itself, is perfectly here, now, part of this inseparable field of consciousness. So that's why we say everything is love, because everything is love. We say it because it's true. It's just a sentence. The sentence isn't true. But what we're pointing at has a validity, has a truth to it that can be discovered. So when I say love yourself, what am I asking you to do, if anything? I don't even know. Let me think about that. So free from conditions, free from too much head, sinking into the heart. But then still, like I love your answer, but what am I really asking you to do? When I say love yourself, what is that? How do you do that? That's a beautiful description, that's a beautiful symbol. Less head, more heart, less logic, more costlessness. But what am I asking you to do? How to love yourself? And then the question arises, how do I allow what is? <coughs> so beautiful, that's getting very, very close. But then still, what am I asking you to actually do? How do you allow what is? What's actually happening when you experience what you call allowance, going from stress or from self-sabotage or from self-judgment to self-love or to acceptance or to allowance? What's actually happening? What are you actually doing? Letting go. But even that, what is that? So those are all beautiful descriptions of how we describe what's happening, but what's actually happening? Who, what, by what mechanism does the experience change from conflict to love? Total acceptance. So how do we accept? Just be? How do we just be? So that's coming very, very close. As close as you're going to get, probably. <laughs> so before, before, and, yeah? So what's at the ground, what's at the basis, and your answer was very close, what's at the basis of all of these symbols? Because every one of you named one symbol that seems to work for you, or one description, one sort of poetic description of what seems to shift in your experience when you're going from conflict to love, or allowance, or love. There you go. So there is a shift in awareness. It's not so much a doing. There is a shift in awareness that then causes you to have a different experience with the beautiful poetry attached to it. Or not. So pointers, what pointers do, they're not doing anything, you see? Like, you're not doing anything, that's what I mean. Like, when I'm pointing to something, when I'm pointing to self-love, when I'm using one of those beautiful poetic sentences all of you just shared, what happens is we're just taking it for granted, which is good. I mean, we're taking the fact that awareness or attention has the ability to change according to where it's directed. So what these meetings are all about is, for me in this case being one of the facilitators, we're all facilitators here for ourselves as well, but taking me as an example, facilitating a group like this, what am I doing through words? What's actually happening? You're all sitting in your chair. You're hardly moving a muscle. You're not doing anything. Maybe you're thinking a little bit here and there, but you're not actively doing anything per se. You're just sitting here physically listening. So what's actually happening? Throughout the course of this hour and a half, you can have, you will have, a wildly different palette of experiencing. Your experience changes constantly. It's like having a clean canvas in front of you and constantly painting over it new colors. Constantly. It's never the same. Every second your experience changes. Now part of that is influenced by the words I speak. Again, it's not in any of the words. See what happens behind the scenes for yourself. See what happens when the shift occurs. It's a shift in awareness that happens. It's a shift in attention. 
a shift in attention is what brings about any change in experience. It's not any doing per se, although the doing follows the change in experience to be a reflection of your present experience. Because whatever we're doing is always a result, flows directly from however we're being. Doing follows being, and being follows attention. Your being, obviously you're always here and in some form, but the form that you're being in, or the frequency of consciousness that you're experiencing, depends on the shift in attention that preceded it. So this whole game of the human life, the human experience, all it really is, is a play of attention. Through attention, anything is attainable. Any doing, any result, any inner experience. Obviously, that's what we're doing all the time, every single day. As soon as our attention shifts, our experience shifts.